Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's session. I'm um, uh, Dr. Oladero. I'm a radiation oncologist at Mayo Clinic um, in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I lead the education efforts for uh, Rios Contra Cancer. We're very happy that you all made the time to join us um, this morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're all from throughout the world. Um, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat group um, to one another. One another. Uh, most importantly, please mute, um, uh, mute yourself so that we can hear our speaker um, clearly. If you have a question, you can send it to me privately. You can raise your hand. Um, I'll be moderating and helping field questions um, to him. We have uh, Mustafa Mohammed said um, he is an RTT at MD Anderson in Texas. He has over 15 years of experience in this role um, and has also taught our previous um, IMRT course um, for RTT. And this weekend, he'll be teaching us about how the RTT workflow changes when we use IMRT. And with that, we'll get started. Thank you, doctor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me see if I share the screen. Good morning, good morning again. My name is Mustafa Mohammed Said. I'm from, uh, I've been here with MD Anderson for more than 20 years, and I've been in radiation therapy for more than 17 years. Uh, I started as a fellow biotomist, and uh, the reason I'm telling you this is, very important because as a fellow biotomist, you know, drawing this blood on a patient, you get to see. Sometimes I, I go in a room, drawing blood as an inpatient, you see the family, you know, you become part of the family. I used to go every morning at 4 a.m. drawing this blood. Then, you know, I'm doing that, while I'm doing that, I was going to school to become a radiation therapist. So it give you that connection that, you, you know, behind the number, you know, the medical number, there's a human. Human that is loved by the family. Human is, you know, hurting because of physical pain, mental, financially, especially financially, because, you know, cancer costs a lot of money for them. So, you know, any kind of technical, you can learn it. But what, what I want us to, to build is that compassion. Compassion, if you have, if you have compassion and care, you work so hard, you know, to learn your art. So I just want to start, you know, let's start from that. And, you know, while, while going through the slides, I'm also going to talk about, you know, patient care, you know, if it is needed during my uh, lecture. All right, let's start now. Yeah, today, like the doctor said, uh, the topic is, you know, how does the workflow change once we move from 2D or 3D to, uh, IMRT. And I'm going to start with a poll. Uh, let me start the slideshow. Okay. Doc, I have uh, this poll. And go ahead, everybody. And uh, uh, what percentage of treatment you claim is IMRT? Take your time to respond to this. We just want to see like, where everybody's at. Doctor, are we be able to see the, the poll or be able to see it? I'm trying to see any kind of response. Yes, yes. So 45% um, said C, 17% said D, 21% said B, 16% said A. Okay, so, you know, we have the uh, results. Yeah, more than 75% like, which is great. So, you know, you know, it's helpful for everybody, even for those of you that we haven't haven't moved to that RMRT yet. Yeah, you get some idea what we're going to talk about. Thank you. All right, going to just today our discussion is going to be we're going to concentrate on three points. Uh, was you know elements of good 
RTT workflow. EGI, you know, it doesn't change much from 2D, 3D, uh, in, in, in a sense that, you know, when it comes to patient care positioning, uh, for sure, we, have, we know we have to uh, uh, do some diligent work when we do MRT, but usually just an extension of how we set up. But when it comes to computer part, you know, that's how everything changes. And, you know, we have we have to add images in that. So when it comes to that one, we think the MRT, most of the time would be daily imaging versus the 3D. And at the end, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, when it comes to radiation college department, uh, when transition into RMRT. This is the workflow uh, for 2D and 3D. Uh, but, you know, uh, hardly you're going to see big change when it comes to the workflow. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, here, you know, you know, in any clinic, uh, the first thing is, you know, they come to the doctor, then there's a the simulation, uh, treatment planning, then plan get approved. Uh, then you have a physics check, uh, then a second physics or the symmetry check there. Uh, the initial chart check, first treatment, then data treatment. That's basically uh, how the workflow goes. And we're going to concentrate on the, the last three one. Uh, please let me know if I'm talking too fast. Uh, stop me, please. I want to make sure everybody understands what I'm trying to say. Is everybody okay with my speed? You could open your mic. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. The first one, the initial chart check. Uh, so it's gonna we're gonna concentrate on the three initial chart check, daily treatment setup, and uh, the daily at the console. The setup basically is in a room. Uh, initial chart check has to be done before we bring the patient in. Then the daily setup uh, in a room and the uh, daily treatment, what we do at the console outside of the room. Okay, initial chart check. All right, first thing is consent. Uh, you know, you gotta be a consent. On this one, we gotta check about we have to make sure there's a the right patient. We are treating the right uh, site. Make sure that you know the side effect matches the consent. For example, let's say patient consented for the head and neck, and uh, second ISO came in at the pelvis area. Make sure that you have a new consent for that, and make sure that uh, it depends from from the institution to institution that how long. The consent is valid. You know, some places be probably a month, other places could be a couple of months. So make sure everything's like you know updated. Simulation document. This is what you use you know to set up your patient. So the patient has to be set up just like uh, the way the simulation was done. Uh, pictures are done. Any, I mean, every institution they do pictures because you know you could go, you could go back and uh, refer to your picture how the patient set up, uh, what kind of uh, device is used, is there a mask, is there a cradle, uh, is, there, is there a bolus, is there, is there a stunt? Basically, you know, you check that one. All this is done, you know, before you bring the patient in. It's the first thing you want to do. Make sure you do that. Maybe you want to do it a day ahead because for some sometimes the device may be misplaced somewhere. So you don't want to be running behind looking for it while the patient is waiting outside. The prescription. Is prescription. Later on, you're going to see some examples, but I'm going to you know, talk about them you know, uh, in brief. You, uh, we're going to talk about you know prescription, consent, all that stuff. But you know, I'm just going to talk about brief right now. Is the prescription sign? Is the sign is, is the same energy? What the energy? Is it six? Is it 15? Is it 18? Does it match the plan? Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, if, in prescription, is the, the doctor, did he put what? Is there a BID is that, you know, twice a day? Uh, anything's added? Is there a bolus in there? Copy of, I mean, nothing changed now. Still, you know, we do that on 2D and 3D. We have to make sure that. Copy of plan. I have that plan, and so it matches prescription. You know, it's better to print, you know, sometimes it helps to print your plan. So, you know, you could, you could, you could check it. And even during the treatment and the first day of treatment, you will be able to see a parameter to check, you know, all, all the angle, the collimator, couch, if you have any couch kicks, or make it easier for you, you know, to have the plan uh, print out. 
Again, plan signed by physician, physics, dosimetry. Again, it depends from uh, side to side. It's like uh, some uh, institution, they're probably good with two physics. On some institution, they don't even have dosimetry. So what's the policy? But make sure that, you know, the needed, the policy that how many signatures needed for the plan. But on the prescription, it has to be the doctor. Again, you have you, you need to have the prescription signed on the uh, on the plan too. Again, uh, QA. Uh, some institution they do QA for uh, IMRT only. Some they do it for two D, uh, probably three D. They do that. So what's the policy? Again, it depends on the uh, on your institution. Again, second check. You two are kind of correct. Make sure that, uh, if, for example, the doctor put like 28 fraction. Do you see a 20, 28 pr fraction on your, on your treatment calendar? Uh, and when you finish treating for a day, for, for, for the day, does it, does it get updated? Does your prescription get updated from the treatment calendar? Make sure you check that. The you know, best thing to do is you know, check it after you finish your first treatment, the first fraction, make sure that it gets updated. But like I said, uh, the device, whether it's a mask or cradle or anything, uh, could the, the bolus, uh, anything that you use to treat a patient, have it available a day before. Check that. Make sure it is in a location that for it, it may be in a different machine. Maybe from the simulation, went to the wrong machine. So have it. It's always better to check it like a couple of days before patient treatment. So you have it with you. So have some kind of check mark. You know, every time you have that, Maybe have like either a have some kind of uh, Excel data sheet or some of this uh, device. I mean, a software like Mosaic. You know, they have their own uh, section that you can check off. Okay, I got the, I got this. Okay, it's the plan is signed. Uh, doctor signed the prescription. Uh, I got my the mask, the stunt, the bolus. So you have it. You know, you could go back and check. If it's not ready, uh, follow up on that. Determine documents, check every document, not by the symmetry, not by physics, not by a uh, doctor, or not by a fellow radiation therapist. For example, if let's say a patient treated in a different machine, machine went down and patient went to a different machine and was treated by different therapists and different therapists put a new note. Follow that before you bring a patient. Maybe some notes, you know, uh, maybe some communication between the therapist, physics or therapist or doctors, and you know, something to be done, some kind of instruction. It should be not, you know, there could be some notation. So before you pull your patient, before you bring the patient, go through that. All right, next one. Uh, any any question before I move on to the daily treatment? All right, moving on. Uh, yeah, I, have a, I have a question. What, what do you say? Um, yeah, I asked if there is a question. I have one. Uh, this okay. is Martin from Uganda. Oh, how you doing, man? Uh, on the last three points from the previous slide, there was a chat chat check. Uh, in No, no, no. Um, continue. The, okay. the last three points. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, yeah, okay. initial, initial chart check. check. Yeah, so in, in, in initial, ch you know, chart check, like you know, you you checking all that stuff, you know, what what, what is that, you know, so included, you know, what what I, I I talked about right now in the chart check, initial chart check, you know, it was then checking the documentation. What exactly do you mean? Because uh, the new systems don't have charts, like yeah, everybody in our area. area. Yeah. Basically, the, doc the documentation, you know, the documentation. Maybe, you know, we need to update that part, but, you know, basically the documentation, what I spoke about. Everything is a patient chart, you know, uh, the consent is a part of the patient chart. The, the, any kind of, you know, prescription is part of the patient chart. So if you go through the patient chart, you're going to see the prescription or the, you know, the, cons the consent, you know, basically that's initial chart check is before you bring the patient, basically initial chart check. So before, you know, because physics, they do like, you know, uh, every week uh, they have a chart check physics or the symmetry uh, for the institution they have the symmetry they gotta be weekly chart check they're gonna see if, if the treatment calendar is updated there's any kind of for example if you put in like you know all the eyes 
are they put on a, on a, on a patient notation, documentation? So those are the documentation are included in the chart check. A good question though. Uh, yeah. Uh, any, okay. Is that okay? Answer, answer your question? Yeah, that is okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's a very, very important. Is the patient positioned correctly? Uh, no matter what kind of uh, technology we have, it still go back to the basic. Like whether we have, you know, OBI, we've got a, uh, we use a CT based, MRI based, or X ray based setup. The key is for us, you know, position is correctly. It make it easier for you. So you don't have to go back in and out to the room. And the patient is positioned correctly. You, it's e easier for you to match. Easier for us to match uh, uh, the one who wants to take our imaging. So is the patient positioned correctly? Uh, the position, you know, do we use the right uh, device, the right, uh, whether it's mask or cradle, you use the right one. Uh, the patient is, for example, you know, patient may be crooked uh, at this when they are sent. Are we matching that one? Because, you know, once they send they're crooked, the key is doing simulation to make the patient straight. But if they're not straight and we have them kind of crooked during simulation, then they come for treatment. If you keep them straight, it's not going to match. So for sure, we're going to learn that the first day you look at, okay, oh, patient a little rotated to the right. And it makes it easier for you. So, you know, by looking at the setup, uh, sometimes what you do is when you have the X and Y, uh, your uh, orthogonal X-ray, you can look at your patient by looking at your uh, AP image, I said, okay, he's a little, a little, you know, tilted to the left, for example, head and neck. So maybe after you set up, uh, set the patient up, then, you know, tilt them a little bit so they can match that. That's the patient positioning, like uh, I just spoke about it, uh, the right device I've used. Again, uh, talk about that too. The field size, uh, you know, make sure uh, this is like, uh, for 2D, 3D, you look at it, it's a field size, it's a right field size in there. Again, you know, wages, all that stuff, you know, uh, use on the 2, 3D, uh, 2D, 3D, and uh, the blocks. Uh, if it's a uh, bit modified, but you know, when we go to MRT, it's gonna be the MLCs, you know, we don't have to worry about the blocks. You know, the, but you know, still we do electron with blocks, but you know, uh, uh, make sure that Everything's available for patients. Visual check the key, you know, before you leave the room, you know, IC center placement, field light, it does feel that matches your, your field. Uh, it, it, I mean, it changes when we get to IMRT, but you know, always go, go, to, go to ISO. The key is, you know, use your laser, put the patient in the right position. Visual check everything before you leave the room, look at it, and uh, here, make sure, you know, your gantry doesn't hit anything before you go. So maybe rotated 180 to the right and 180 to the left. Maybe it could add a couple of minutes to you, but trust me, it will save you a lot of headache in case collusion happen. Safety check again, like I said, this one of the such check, uh, checking the, the gantry rotation, the table, and uh, make sure, because sometimes you know, patient family comes in the room, either to translate or to hold. And while you sit on the patient, the patient family may be sitting at the seat waiting, for, you know, so make sure that everybody's out of the room. We have to make sure that everybody's out of the room before we close the door. That should be part of our timeout. It should be like a list of timeout. Make sure that you know, the room is clear. You know, and talk one, you know, it's loudly talk to one another. There should be at least two people in the room when we do radiation, at least because we check one another. Uh, if the patient has a, let's say Mr. Smith is laying down, he's a head and neck patient. Okay, checking like a setup, let's say it is a, a, with a bolus, three millimeter bolus stand. So talk to one another. All right, three millimeter bolus. I'm placing that bolus right now to you, you know, to one another. All right, Mr. Smith, give me a name. Uh, don't them say, please ask the patient, what's your name? Check the name and check the, on, on the stand. Then, ask the, uh, the patient to repeat their name, then give them that, give them that stunt. You don't want to give you know, the wrong stunt. Uh, that's not be pretty. And you know, call to one another, loud. Make sure that everybody's in the same uh, part on that one. So at least two, 
two therapists in a room. The plan check right here. It's a uh, few help. You know, you, you can see these here. Uh, I'll show you. You can see that the two D four field setup, uh, APPA left and lateral. Just uh, I want to make sure to check that, um, uh, and you know, make sure this matches uh, your your uh, prescription. Sorry about that. Sorry about the network. Again, a plan check. Here again. Uh, just uh, make sure when you check it, you know, here's the way we want to check, uh, you know, what's uh, the gantry, uh, your energy, uh, gantry, go position, collimator, you have a couch kick. There's no wedge here, you can see that. So this is how you want to check, uh, especially first day, make sure that everything matches, uh, uh, you know, what you have in this and what you have on the screen. And like uh, for sure, uh, you, you might you you plan matches with your with prescription. Uh, like you know, since there are different kind of uh, softwares for planning, uh, it may change from uh, institution to institution. You may have seen this before, or you may have seen. Here again, a plan check. Uh, here, okay, we could talk right here earlier. I told you we're going to talk about uh, the prescription matching the plan. Uh, here, uh, you got to check everything. It's a right breast technique 3D plan, uh, modality 6 and 15. They use two energy here. Already 11 uh, fractions done out of 25. So there's 14 to go on this one. 200 centigrade per day. Uh, here again, make sure you know 11 times to 100 is a 2200 centigrade given. And uh, once that one's finished, you have a brace boost, which is electron plan. And you, you come here and check that and make sure that you have that 25 fraction. This is a plan right here at the bottom. This is your uh, prescription. Uh, 200 centigrade again times five, you know, 25 times. And here uh, you, you got the fields, the jaws right here, the X and Y, the, the gantry, uh, 57 collimator. Make sure everything matches. Uh, this one has to be matched on your screen, what you got out, what you pulled out. But first, uh, before, you, before you bring your patient, and the first day, make sure it's in the march and make sure it's signed, signed by the doctor. This again, uh, breast patient, you know, uh, one thing about, you know, when you have those uh, tangent, you know, you will be able to see your field light. Then make sure that uh, fish cover the match coming before you leave the room. Rotator, checker, and check the other one. Make sure that you know everything a bit, you know, the matches. And uh, again, this is our uh, plus check that because, especially since breast patient, they have their arms out. Uh, we have to make sure that they set up on a table uh, properly so there's no any gantry uh, collusion. And if it's left, if, if it is the if you move, if you have to move to the left side, the gantry, make sure it went to the left side because since patient is offset to the right, then that the collusion collision is going to happen. All about is, you know what, efficiency and safety. Uh, learn, you know, to speed up once you get the efficient, you know, the, the efficiency, you know, we don't want to rush things. Sometimes machine goes down. Uh, we, cannot, we cannot control that. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, patients be on table for a long time. But all we have to, we have to worry is the patient on table. Uh, we, what we do is go and communicate with the rest of the patient waiting on the waiting area, let them know that you a little behind, give them time, but concentrate on that patient. Because what's going to happen is if you start rushing, that's where all the disaster happens. And one thing about, you know, I uh, said it before, uh, one thing about radiation, once you give it, you can't take it back. So make sure before you be mourn, I have to make sure before we be mourn that we get the right patient, it's the right ISO, uh, you know, uh, the right side, you know, is it left breast or the right breast? We have to make sure that. Uh, so take your time to make sure that everything is perfect. That's what I say, you know, I think we need perfection in this profession because like I said, it's not any kind of profession. This profession, once you give radiation, we kind of take it back. We have a question. Um, okay. First was, is this done at the planning room or at the treatment room? And then Martin said, my point is about the ideal situation 
where at least two RTTs communicate with each other during the patient setup in order to counter check each other. In reality, it's not what happens in our resource constrained economies where one RTT works alone for more than six hours. Yeah, see, that's, I think uh, hopefully anybody from any institution that uh, in charge of, is, is there any, uh, is he, I mean, we the leaders, you know, as a therapy or, uh, because we the one, here's the thing. Even though the doctor prescribed physics and the Sumerian planet, we are the one at the end. We the one who's given this. There should be any any institution should give a voice to the therapist. That there's a uh, there's a you know uh, I spoke about it before uh, Toyota. You know Toyota. Uh, you know Toyota is the best car in the world. Uh, and wherever you go, they make the best car. Uh, whether it's Toyota or Lexus, it's the best car. You know, it lasts your a lifetime. They have, they have one policy, what's called stop the line. Basically what it is, you know, it's an assembly line. If somebody see any kind of error or mistake, they just put the line and the whole thing stops. The whole thing stops. And then they go back and review what's going on, you know, before they continue. So here we do that, we practice at the MD Anderson and stop the line. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's students, a therapist or a physicist or a doctor, if somebody said that, stop the line, everybody stop the line. We would rather stop the line for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes than you know, treat the wrong patient or treat them the wrong way. Oh, yeah, okay. So yeah. what, what I'm saying is, if anybody in the institute, any, any institution here, anybody, I mean, like I said, uh, Therapist, we should be the leader because you know we we, uh, we, sh we should have uh, you know we should have a say. Our voice has to be heard. It is very very important to have two people in the room. Very important. And have I worked by myself? Yes, I have. But you know, uh, you know, right now the policy in the office, and if you don't have two people, you can't even bring a patient in. Yeah. In any institution, you go there, you know, and. Uh, uh, some of the points, some of the, some of the uh, you know, agencies uh, granting, you know, permission granting agency in the US, they require you to have two therapists to treat the patient. So they need to think about that. First of all, you know, be more productive. You can go fast, you be more efficient. So you will be able to treat more people because if you put one, one therapist for six hours, the therapist will get tired. Then we're going to talk about safety issue now. You know, we get tired, guess what? We kind of concentrate. And it's going to be a safety issue. So uh, thank you, Martin, for mentioning. But you know what? I think every institution needs to think about this. They should, they should need to find some kind of resource. I don't understand. You know, there's, uh, you know, countries, you know, it's so tough. Some, some places, they only have one machine for the whole country. You know, I've done some research and stuff like that. But uh, it's very, very important to have a second person in the room. And then um, there was a question about, do you use wing board for breast setup? So I mainly run our breast program and I do. We, in most places, use wing setup for the supine position. Um, yeah, of you know, usually have some kind of, uh, what you call it, uh, angle, you know, from five degrees to 20 that we use, but sometimes it's partial breast and a small lesion, be able to so do you that. Don't need that. Yeah. yeah. So it depends, you know, it depends. And, you know, doctor, you could answer this, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it depends. It depends, you know, if you know, be able to, for, you know, able to treat uh, what you want to treat with the wing board, then, you know, it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. And then um, what is the best setup of breast patient, wing board or breast board? Breast board, I mean, no, it give you that angle to do, you know, like I said, it depends, but most of our patient, most of our, I mean, most of the patient is going to be some kind of angle. Mm -hmm. Some kind of Can angle. Can you explain what is a dry run? Yeah, dry run is, you know, you bring a patient, uh, you set them up, you don't treat, you do everything, you go through the whole thing, the whole process, setting them up, you know, take an image, x-ray, all that stuff. But the only thing you don't do is you don't be moaned. So to make sure that in everything set up, for example, the doctors, you know, worried about maybe if the patient does it, does it clear or, uh, you know, they would do that. Some, uh, some uh, doctors did, they always want to do dry run, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. I have the opposite doctor, I work with doctor. They don't treat, uh, head and neck doctor. They don't treat unless we do a dry run. 
That's what he wants. He wants to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know the good thing about it, once you do dry run, the next day is going to be quick. You get in, you know, and because you know the how it's set up, you already have image approved by the doctor, so you don't have to wait for the doctor to approve any image for you. Mm -hmm. So basically, you do everything except being on. Three, yeah. Um, and then, uh, is it okay to have treatment time out for external beam radiation to help reduce occurrence of radiation incidents? Timeout. Yeah. The time out. Time out is I mean, it's a must. It, you got to be time out. You know, in the room, you go like, like I said, you call, you call, everything, every device needed for that patient, whether it's stunt or bolus, what kind of. Then once you come out, you're gonna go through again. Okay, this is Mister, Mister, Missus. Name the, the patient. Then talk about it. Okay, we have the right patient. Then you take X-ray. Do you agree with X-ray? Every step has to have timeout till you beam on. Every step has to have timeout. You have to click in or you have to mark something. Okay, we check this. Or we check image looks good. You have to argue. That's why I you know you have to have more than one therapist because you have to argue before you beam on. Uh, do you like the image? Uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, let's do it, you know? So that's uh, Martin, like, like I said, you know, uh, that's the advantage of ha having the second therapist. And it has to be timeout because you cannot timeout by, you know, it's very hard, kind of hard, you know, timeout against yourself. Uh, it's, it's good. I mean, I mean, it's doable, but you know, trust me, it's 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 it's, it's always better because you may not see something that your partner may see. It. So, God, your partner goes, "Oh, you know what? Let's check this. Double check this." Like I said earlier, stop the line. You know, uh, timeout. Every, should be part of the workflow. You gotta have timeout. Okay. So, if we are planning IMRT or VMAT, why? use angle or why do you need a breastboard? I think that you see the setup, like I said, remember what I said uh, earlier, no matter how we go in technology, position is the key. Let's go back to the position. Is that position is that the position patient flat will give us what we need. Can we get our PTV based on that? Without affecting, you know, can we get like, you know, how much or, you know, uh, organ at risk are we, uh, you know, saving by setting them up flat because nothing changed right now. See, because all the, the only thing changes, we change like, you know, we, 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 VMAT and RMRT will give us to reduce our margin. Margin is very, very strict, you know. So, but the other thing didn't change. So, we still go have to go back to our basic or position. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer this question really quickly so that we can move on. Someone said, I've seen dry run performed on Varian Lenac. Is there an equivalent on Electa machine? Dry run has nothing to do with the machine. Dry run just means you're doing a practice run. The patient has already had a plan made. They would come to the clinic on day one. They would do a dry run, meaning we'll run the entire plan, but we're not going to treat the patient. The goal is to make sure the alignment is correct, the machine clears, the patient is comfortable, and the setup is reproducible. There, there are some um, physicians like myself who, if everything checks out well that day, I do prefer to treat that patient that same day rather than bringing them again the next day or adding an extra day to their treatment. Um, so... It may not be feasible where you are, especially if you have many patients waiting to use a machine to have a whole dedicated first first day of treatment be like the the test run. Um, but it's irrespective of any machine. It's just a concept of trying out what you do. It's just another level of safety uh, for patients in general before we actually treat them. Thank so you, I'll let Mustafa continue with um with his uh, presentation. Thank you. So you yeah, check, you know, your field uh, is it for 2D, 3D, you'll be able to see your field draw. So the next day you can match it. Uh, it depends from institution to institution. If it's not dry, I mean, if it's not uh, MRT, uh, some institution film once a week, some every three days. Uh, but, you know, you draw it very well. So the next day, if you don't film in, your field matches uh, the treatment uh, basically matches your uh, what you draw, feel like. All right, now we we'll go to a console. We were in the room, just like so. You see, uh, hey Martin, you see, like we have a pilot and co pilot right here. 
So that's what help us. You know, this is checking right now. Imagine you, you know, when I fly, any, anywhere I fly, I just go inside and I just, I don't know, every time I fly, I'm tired, man. I just go and sleep. But the thing is, you know, my trust that, you know, people and the pilots, the pilots are doing the job or the safety check, what they do. The same thing now, when the patient comes into uh, to us, they trust us. It's a big trust. They come in, they lay down on the table. You know, think about it. Female patients, breast cancer, or any kind of, you know, uh, in the public area. They export, you know, their private part. So we have to be responsible. Think about it. These people are, like, like I said earlier, there's a financial issue, mental issue, you know, and uh, all kinds. They're going through a lot of stuff. They're going like, you know, they, they, they're taking a pen med. Sometimes they can't even walk. Then they come in and they, you know, they take off their uh, the clothes to lay down in their treatment, you know, bring their arm up. Think about, you know, how uh, people want to cover up when it comes to their breast. So here we have to take responsibility, a big response. We have it's a big responsibility to treat these people. That trust for, the, uh, you know, for a female patient to come in and, you know, uncover herself, bring her arm up, that's some serious trust. So how do we pay that trust back? You have to understand, let's think about people we love, you know, daughters, mother, sister, they have their own loved one. They have mother, they have sister, their sister, their mother, their wives. So that's why we have to make sure that an institution need to invest, you know, need to invest to have the second therapist. So safety check has to be done. Like I said earlier, once you give it, you can't take it back. So council area, very, very important. Again, timeout, like uh, I spoke earlier, very important. We have to go through a timeout one by one. It may add a couple of minutes, but that's the best thing we could do to our patient. Again, it's the breast example, you know, uh, just another plan to show you, make sure they're all parameters. That's our uh, uh, safety check at the console. The gantry, is that the right gantry? What you see on the plan, uh, on, on, the, on the console? The collimator, uh, check uh, the energy, check the left lateral medial, the right lateral, check all, everything has to be checked, has to match before we born. That's why we have to talk to one another. Okay, do you agree? Okay, and it's easier to for second therapist to call the numbers while the one who's being one is looking at the screen. Six hours by use by you know one one therapist do by six hours and you know it gets tiring. So it's like you know numbers are you know you, you want to make sure that we make sure that we go through them uh, the right way. Here we go to console here. Another thing, you know, while we're sitting here, uh, I'd say it's a timeout. Timeout is very important. Like the, what we didn't check all the documentation. And let's look, we have to look at also the MLC here. Looks like the shape of the MLC. If it's, you know, if you look at the MLC, because the incident happened in uh, uh, New York uh, uh, a while ago. Uh, patient, the breast patient, uh, I think, I don't know how many fractions she had on, but uh, there's a hole. There's a big hole on her breast. So uh, she was becoming patient. Uh, I mean, that she got admitted. But when they checked that, the whole time the MLC was open. I think maybe during planning, uh, it's, I mean, this passed everybody, passed physics and came to the therapist and therapist, uh, you know, they noticed that the MLC is open. That's why, you know, when we do this, especially right now with this all the uh, TikTok and uh, all kind of uh, Instagram times, people are to want to use their phone. I think during radiation therapy, phone should be like in a pocket or in a purse. I'm not, you know, I'm the, but what I'm saying is, I'm telling you, if I know, if, if somebody treating me, I don't want them to use a phone. You get distracted, we get distracted. So, and plus, you know, we touch a phone and we go touch our patient. It, it, it come on other like, you know, what's called the infection control issue too. Some people take the phone to the bathroom and they come in and they touch that and go get the patient and stuff. I think phone should be, uh, use the, I'm not saying that I'm not be like, you know, dictator, like you know, we cannot have phone and stuff. Like, there should be a time for that. Not during the patient on table. It's a time to concentrate and go through the time out. You know, to monitor the patient and the machine. Patient, patient may, may move after you take x-ray. Patient may, be, may, may get uncomfortable and they move. And that's why if they move and if it's a big move, they may need to refilm. So, 
how do we know unless we are looking at them? If you look at our phone, uh, that'd be a problem. All right, here's a question here. Take your time. Which of the following is not responsibility of radiation therapists transitioning to RMRT? Image registration techniques, contouring approving target volume, knowledge of cross-section anatomy, and mobilizing techniques. Take a couple of minutes and please answer. Can you please open the poll, please? The, uh, the one we have is um, on treatment plan. Having treatment plans automatically uploaded to the console makes me feel that's the no Okay. Yeah, we don't have this one. This is what I got is, okay. Let me go, I'll go, okay. So let's go right here. All right, uh, did everybody think it's controlling and approving target volume? <laughs> yeah. Can somebody answer me why is controlling and approving target volume? Was that the answer? All right, for sake of time, I'm going to answer because this is the responsibility of the doctor. Controlling and approving target volume has to be approved by the doctor. These are mostly taken care by the radiation oncologist, actually. Exactly, yeah, the radiation oncologist, that's right. So that's the answer. I don't know how you guys know, but uh, all right, let's continue. B. All right, so now how they think changing when we go to uh, MRT. Again, you know, we're just gonna talk this part again. Uh, for the MRT, uh, it depends on the institution, the pre-treatment QA, some require, some don't. But right now I think most institution require that. It has to be signed. Please say more markers, someone has marked. What do you say? Someone on mark, please remove the marker, green marker, red one. There is an echo, and I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There's an echo with the voice. Um, He's saying there's a marker on your slide, the red yeah. line. Why is that marker happening? I say, let me see, am I doing it? You're right. I don't know why is the, the, mark, the marks are on my slides. Yes, it was puzzling me. We make sure that you know those marks are gone before we send it to everybody, okay? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just like that. I was like, sorry about that. Uh, uh, one more time. Okay, continue. Thank you. Okay, this is the one uh, they had the earlier doctor having a treatment plan. Okay, so this is like a poll again. All right, perfect. Yeah, let's let, let's look at this. You know, couple of minutes and let's answer this. See, let's see. I'm checking the treatment plan. Okay. So, like I said, you know, uh, you know, we have to get the habit of checking, going through those lists, go through patient chart, then make sure that you. I know, especially I'm moving from a uh, paper chart. You know, going to uh, e chart. Uh, it's a little different because you have to go through all stuff. You know now. Uh, you know, when you do such a touch tangible, you know, you put on stuff and, but you know, it's more practice and more going like, you know, build, learn it to do it perfectly, then, you know, build your, your, your speed. That's what you want to do. Uh, make sure that, you know, the, the key is ask, you know, that there's no, there's no pride in, in this uh, field. You know, we have to be humble, humility, especially the people we treat, you know, they're fighting for their life. I think there should be, there, should, there shouldn't be any pride on that yeah, because if we have to be humble. We have to be that humility to ask questions. If you don't know, we don't know. I learn every day from my students. That's a blessing, you know. So some people have different perspectives that teach us some. So at the end of the day, you know, just like, you know, push ourselves to learn. Like I said, have that compassion for the patient, not compassion as with M, compassion, not con. The reason is because some people, you know, they show that compassion to uh, in front of other people, but when other people come, you know, the different people. 
And you know, that comes, that comes again as safety issue because. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, take time, take time to learn, uh, you know, you, 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 it's an art, art and science. Take time and uh, try, I mean, we've all been there. We've all been at first, you know, we're anxious, you know, then uh, with knowledge uh, comes, uh, with experience and knowledge, be more alive. So teach yourself and uh, ask those who knows. I think it's good to start a mentee and mentor program. Uh, it helps, you know, those who are senior in radiation therapy take the new ones, the student or the new hire as a mentee and mentor them. I mean, this institution, you know, should uh, uh, start that kind of program would help. Uh, things, you know, uh, MRC instead of manually placing, but you know, those you know, heavy blocks, uh, you don't have to use it anymore. Make it that. That's, and again, you don't have to go, uh, you know, less enter in the vault because you don't have to change your block or wedges anymore. Uh, because, you know, you take your X-ray uh, or uh, your CT, make sure you set up, again, before you leave your room, make sure you set up the patient the right way. Uh, because uh, no matter any imaging you have, it's not going to place positioning. Positioning has to go first. You know, make sure they know they rotate the right way, they set up by the, using the laser, they fry it, they take images. But you know, uh, that's a big advantage. So you don't have to carry any blocks and we don't have to carry, we don't have to go in and out uh, often. These are the, you know, uh, computerized uh, plans uploaded, electronic record, digital imaging. Uh, there's going to be a lecture on this later on, uh, but you know, you know the, uh, the KV, the Combeam CT, all the images, you know, the OBIs. There's a question, please. Um, okay. PSQA, is it important? Is it compulsory for IMRT? It should be. If you ask me, I should be compulsory for MRT. Like I said, now we're talking about, you know, tight margin and what percentage is given. You know, the quiz can give you like, you know, what percent, what's an institution, some institution may probably require you, the QA to pass 95%, some 97, some they want 100. But how you do you know, how, how do we know unless we do the QA? What percentage, you know, pass for that uh, treatment? QA has to be done. If you ask me, it should be compulsory for IMRT. Especially for those start new, why don't we start new? You know, when we start new, just do the right way. You know, I mean, a lot of study done for this to happen. So for those who start new for the first time IMRT, it's a blessing. Just take that, uh, what you call it, the platform, take that workflow and just implement it. So about, again, it's about safety, safety for the patient. Again, we'll go back again. There's a the question about can RTTs design radiation plans? Yeah, some, you know, some institution, for example, see here in uh, the US, therapists are uh, only do the treatment and you have the symmetry do the planning. I think most institutions. But if you go to Canada or Europe, the RTTs are the, 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 the symmetry at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it depends how, you know, what the institution wants to do. Uh, Europe uh, and Canada, the, 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 basically the therapists become the symmetry and they do the planning. Here in the US, most institution, you have therapists by themselves and you have uh, the symmetry. So who does the planning? But you know, uh, people get cross trained, mm -hmm. and uh, especially you know places like you know uh, if there's a resource, you know if not up, if not uh, if you don't have like you know a resource to pay uh, the symmetry, maybe train the therapist. Actually, I probably trained a couple of therapists so they could work together for the safety and they do the planning too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that way, you know, you have more therapists to do the planning to be in a room because you need more therapists to do the, the, treatment, plan, the treatment so they could do the planning. But it depends on uh, how the institution wants to move on. Someone said, can you use BOLUS and IMRT? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. you can use uh, BOLUS and IMRT. I think in most of our hearing neck questions that use that. Uh, so yes, yeah. you see, that's what it is, you know, maybe well, what the purpose of the bonus, you know, so uh, the purpose of the bonus is, you know, to make it to surface and stuff. So again, 
you know, the basic, basic concept of uh, radiation therapy didn't change because of IMRT. They just build on that one, you know, to make it easier and to make it uh, uh, better, Chairman. All right, you know, we talked about that earlier. I'm just gonna click on uh, copy of plan, like I said earlier, uh, make sure this is, I went through it, but we're gonna see some examples. We go through them, let's see. All right, here we go, consent is an example of a consent for a prostate cancer. And you know, these are the reaction. Uh, make sure that as you have the right patient name, make sure, you know, I took out, you know, I don't have a name in this one, but make sure that, you know, uh, matches the patient that you have about to treat. And then you know, the laterality because it's prostate doesn't have it. If it's breast or if it's uh, extremities, it's gonna be probably left and right. But you know, it's not applicable for this one. And you know, uh, another thing is, you know, does the patient have a pacemaker? If a female patient, is a patient pregnant? Any chance of pregnancy? Uh, how do we do with that? You know, uh, anesthesia, how do we do that? Uh, do we, is there any policy for pregnancy? You know, if the patients, if you ask the, pa the patient, ask, uh, oh, do you think you're pregnant? And any chance you're pregnant? If, if the patient is like, she not sure about that, so how do we do that? How are we going to do that? Do we have any kind of lab test we could do? A quick, a fast lab test, whether urine or blood, what, 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 what kind of, uh, uh, what's called, uh, workflow do we have for the institution? So that's why, you know, uh, it has to be in place because, you know, we don't want to treat a, a pregnant patient. Uh, so, you know, that would be like, you know, discussion with the doctor, all that stuff, but uh, do we have that in place to make sure that, you know, screen them for pregnancy? So make sure it's signed by the by a patient. If the patient unable to pay to sign, make sure that, you know, the guardian for the patient signed the, the consent because without that, you cannot treat. Consent has to be there, the patient has to consent. And, you know, they could uh, refuse treatment. Even after they consent, they come in, you know, you want to treat them and they said, I don't feel like getting treatment. Uh, all right, you know, talk to, discuss, send a message to the doctor that patient doesn't want to get treated and send them to a clinic to discuss with the doctor what's going on. We cannot force people to have a treatment and we can't get mad, even with behind and stuff. Because patient, like I said, they go through a lot. Maybe you don't feel like laying down that day. You know, they're going through, they're getting chemo. Uh, chemo is, you know, destroying all stuff. You know, they kind of walk, they kind of eat. Now they don't want treatment. So, you know, show that compassion again, be nice. That's another safety issue because you know you you, you have to be uh, unless this compassion has to go like you know to everybody to your patient to the patient family to your coworker you know we have to have like that cohesion in there if your coworker doesn't feel safe around you it's a safety issue again they don't want to come in but if they come in because they have to work you know to uh, live you know to make a living but they don't want to be there because they uh, they are afraid of the coworkers that's a safety issue. So we have to think about that. This is, uh, you know, it's like the whole team has to be, you know, one. Uh, whatever I see, this, 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 what we do is bigger than all of us, bigger than our emotion, bigger than, bigger than our feeling. Because we feel, we, we know, we, we, we are treating people fighting for their, for their life. And we're treating them with a machine that could be lethal. You know, if you don't use it the right way, radiation could kill. So that, that uh, care has to be for everybody. Patient may show up late and stuff. Guess what? Okay, we get you, but you know, we don't have to like, you know, be a little aggressive to them. There's a lot going on. You know, uh, like I said, they in pain medication and stuff. You know, they probably didn't sleep the whole night last night. Human, you know, we know that how we know our uh, physiology works. We don't sleep, we get tired. We take a medication, we get, you know, all, all stuff got stuff. We have to understand it, especially us, we know how we learn, you know, Knowing just you know basic anatomy and physiology will tell us you know how the body function. So uh, it's very very important. And this mark on the screen I don't know where it came from, but all right here we go. Uh, and again here a prescription for prostate. Uh, just make sure they check that. Uh, Seventeen out of twenty eight is done. You look at 11 left and uh, make sure if 250 daily, 20 fraction, and uh, make sure that we check everything, the plan versus the, this is an IMR. Yeah, you see here, technique, DMAT. All right. If the doctor 
one, 103 VMAT and but say 3D or says RMRT without saying VMAT, you know, uh, contact the doctor to change that prescription. That's what we have to check. Say full bladder. The doctor wants a full bladder. Uh, you know, it's a, again, uh, there's a daily KV uh, field and daily bladder ultrasound. So it has to be full bladder. So they're going to be volume on the plan, how much water is needed. They give you a range plus or minus 20% or so we have to make sure that everything everything is there before we treat a patient. You check that and you know it. After that, you know, like that the first they maybe struggle for the patient because some people are not get used to drinking water, but you help them, you know, for a week and stuff, you know, then you know, that, that's another thing it puts you behind because uh, empty bladder. But you know, you gotta be, you gotta be patient to work with them. So like I said, they're going through a lot. And for, they, for the first time for them to hold their full bladder, it's not easy. Again, physiology, it's not what we think. So our, our body has a different, you know, different plan for us. All right, here's a DVH, show you this. Uh, again, uh, you can see right here. It's, Modality photons, and that's it. So those lines are here. I guess I'm just going to an example of a uh, plan. Uh, you know, different software, again, planning software. Uh, again, is a plan right here. You can check out, again, it's a VMA technique. Uh, the arcs are, the first one's counterclockwise, you know, second one's clockwise. So, you know, it's going to go, Counterclockwise is going to go that way. You know, just you know, by looking at it, uh, let's say, say counterclockwise and go clockwise. That's why, like, we have to be diligent. We have to look at what what the chart says and what the, what our machine is doing. So basically, we have to be hundred percent immersed in our treatment. Of them in the patient, of them in the machine. Uh, another plan here. Uh, here another the axilla, right? The axilla here. MRT plan. This one is a step and shoot. It's not VMAT anymore. You have like your angle. Uh, that's these all these the zeros are the couch kick, so there's no any couch kick. And you have the the degree like the angles right here. I uh, see you, you notice that uh, from 230 and 350 are on the this side. Then you have 25, 55. So that way, uh, what you call it. Uh, you have 350, you know that by looking at that, okay, I'm not going down. So this part is going to clear. And uh, here, 55, you're going to be upset. You tell, but I said, I'm going to clear that. But you know what? We don't want to go through that. Check it. The stuff from 230 and past 60 to make sure that before we leave the room, to make sure that this thing clears. If it doesn't clear, uh, we have to reposition them again. Because you don't want to check this after you treat like three, four field patient. Now you have to move the patient after you treat them uh, like, like we say fields. You know, this, uh, sometimes you know, for this word, it helps dry run, you know, doing dry run helps. But you know, again, you have to check, make sure that the gantry clears, especially when the table is offset. If you do like you know, any kind of extremity, uh, your table is going to be offset to one side. Uh, so uh, let's go check, you know, make sure it goes this way. All the way down and it goes that way, all the way down before even you film. Once you fill them and once you start treatment, uh, that's not a good idea to go and move them. No surprises. So, do that. This is like our safety in the room. Here is a you know, setup. Uh, again, looks obvious. You got a lower cradle right here. Again, you know, you got, we got a good check, that safety check, make sure the gantry goes this way, that way, patient arm, uh, yeah, we're treating right here. Okay, the, the placement is good because we don't want to keep the arm right here if you're treating in this area because the radiation go, is going to go through the... Okay, pain the same. So it's a light field does not represent the actual treatment field now because you have we have a moving MLCs. Maybe you could see your first, you know, MLC, you know, uh, field and stuff. But you know what? It's different right now. But the good thing is though, we we filming daily. Again, that filming doesn't replace you, our positioning. We have to position patient right, so we could have a quick, you know, film, a good film. Film doesn't take that long, but that's why we have to position them right because we don't give them any more radiation exposure, whether it's KV or MV. There's still exposure. We want to give this patient a needle, but let's say a 28th fraction. Think about it. We have to, 
if you do four films KV daily, which is pre and post shift, now multiply that by 28. All right, that's more than 100, yeah? Then now, if you don't set them right, then we have to film again and again. That's radiation exposure. We don't want to give it to them. Even though we're keeping them, you know, we don't want to have that kind of mentality that, oh, they're getting a, a mega voltage and stuff like that. Any radiation is uh, unnecessary radiation is harmful. We don't need to give them that. A lot of, we have to, we have to follow that. Uh, so because they get that mega voltage, we, we, you know, there's a fallacy. Some people may say that, oh, they get more voltage. It's, 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 you know, it's not that much. No, it is. Any extra radiations, I need a radiation should stop, shouldn't even give it. That's why I set them right, try to get them the first time. You know, you look at your pre-shift, uh, then make a shift and trail. It shouldn't be more than like uh, for x-rays, you know, like, I mean, there, there are times you, know, you would have patient, like difficult patient that you have to film and stuff, like, but the exception. But if you do, if you set them up the way we do the simulation, it's, uh, it's not needed. So let's think, always let's think about uh, radiation exposure. Should be with us, because with, uh, with the IMRT, there are gonna be a lot of imaging. All right, what do you check instead, yeah? This one. So like I said, we check our ISO, then when ISO is then, you know, set them up and we take, we take our X-ray and, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the uh, patient set up, right? Safety check are the same, yeah, avoid collision avoidance check, uh, go in the room before you, before we leave the room, uh, make sure, you know, go clockwise and counterclockwise with the gantry to make sure everything clear. So you don't have, we don't have to worry about it. Once it came out, we know that it cleared, unless we make a big shift during the film. And uh, I don't think we should do that because uh, we set them up right. Yeah, here, patient will position more accurate because now, you know, our margins were tight. It's not like 2D or 3D, you have a different margin, you know, a bigger big, big margin. This is very, very tight. So uh, maybe we're gonna miss our target or we're gonna irradiate uh, organ at risk. So that's why, our position must be accurate. All right, console. You know, I tried this video, it didn't work, you know, but hopefully when we send uh, this, uh, try to fix it. I mean, all the videos I tried them for some reason, they didn't work. I've been working on them, they didn't work. But basically I'm trying to show that, you know, uh, you know, uh, the field, what it looks like with, uh, this thing is like, you know, animation, but uh, uh, basically, you know, you have bigger margin with, uh, 2D versus 3D, and uh, because now with 2D, even the patient get rotated, anterior posterior and stuff, you know, with a big margin, you be, would be all right. Based on now here, we have angle added on three fields. So it makes, you know, it's here very, very critical that a patient is not rotated, the patient set up the right way. Uh, hopefully, you know, next time uh, we send this out, uh, I'm gonna work on it, okay, the video, so you'll be able to see it. I'll send you the link, I think it's a YouTube video, yeah. The, sorry about that. Yeah. So you see from 3D to MRT, look at how tight the margin is. Then here it becomes more even important that, you know, uh, set up positioning again, positioning. Oh, hey, later. okay. You can look at this, you see like this is the uh, PTV is right here and this is films taken. Look like, like uh, but look at it probably three, three, three and a half, same off, you know. Uh, you know, imagine uh, this patient is like, you know, he has a, what you call it, a big, big belly, you know, so sometimes you cannot depend, you know, on those uh, marks, uh, what's in a belly, especially, in the, you know, the lower body, um, not the pelvis, you know, in the GI area. So sometimes maybe, you know, we want to place those, uh, those uh, mark higher and make our shift. But the good thing is, you know, we take X-ray, so we'll be able to shift. So, but you know, look at that; it's a big, big uh, shift right here. I mean, big difference. Uh, ODI versus uh, daily imaging. We have uh, two questions. Um, one is, what about daily comb beam versus KV KV imaging for three D pelvis treatment setup reproducibility? For the CD pelvis, uh, doctor, you could ask this, but if you ask me, I said, I think it's unnecessary. I could say it's overkill. Uh, my, my tears, it depends, you know, the, what the situation, but what I'm saying is that daily, especially in the pelvis area, I think it, it give like a 1250 mass. 
that's a lot of uh, exposure, but you know, it depends on a, uh, on a, uh, uh, but you know, uh, uh, hey, hey doc, you want to answer on this one? Yeah, on this, uh, because- uh, So, because, uh, yes, yeah. So with regards to um, daily imaging, it depends on what you're going to use as your landmark. If you're using a bony anatomy, for example, in the pelvis as your landmark, let's say you were treating a rectal case um, and you know just use bony anatomy, getting comb beam might be a little bit excessive. Um, so just like breast, you can use the bony anatomy. Um, you don't need comb beams for intact breast every day on treatment you can get weekly KV or MV imaging uh, for that purpose. However, um, there are situations whereby when you're treating a rather large volume and you're near critical structure. So for example, when you're doing IMRT for breast and you intend to treat the regional nodes and you're worried about you know, um, the heart, the dose to the heart, Getting a comb beam can be very helpful, especially when you're doing deep inspiration breath hold um, to reduce toxicity to the heart and minimize dose to the lung. In those instances, uh, physicians will order daily comb beams throughout treatment uh, for IMRT for regional nodes um, for breast patients. Same thing with head and neck. Um, you know, people will get comb beams for very large volumes um, just to be more confident of their setup. Usually some of the requests can be driven by the therapist because you have to be comfortable turning that machine on and you need to be confident that the patient is aligned the way the prescription has um, designed it to be. And so if that's not going to work well for you to visualize what you feel you should be visualizing using KV, KV, then you should push for another option. Um, if that would increase your confidence level as an RTT before treating patients. But just know that I know people sort of downplay how much radiation dose you get from comb beams because it's so minimal. But my philosophy is zero is also better than minimal. So <laughs> if you don't need to get a comb beam, don't get it. But if you need a comb beam to make you more confident before you press that treat button, then you should ask for it. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, adding to what the doctor said, um, there were times I, we get a patient for weekly uh, imaging. But the first day we looked at it, I said, okay, this patient is not, uh, you know, we looked at it, it was a difficult setup and look at it the second day. We take, even though it stays weekly, the next the second day we take x-ray still, we have a big shift and we talk to the doctor to change the prescription to make it a daily. So like the doctor said, uh, make sure, uh, you know, how comfortable you are setting up the patient. Okay, here are more imaging. You can see, you can see that uh, on this one, uh, the fiducial, and the bone anatomy is like is off. You can see it right here. But you know, after shift, you know, everything match. Even the fiducia matches the bony anatomy. But the setup is supposed to be you know, with the fiducia, but it's perfect setup. So you know, this is an example of before and after image. Pre and um, there's a question. What should you check if the field light is not actual treatment fields? The field light is not, I mean, it's a, I mean, it depends. For example, let's say if it is a 2D and 3D, it should match. If it doesn't match, you cannot treat. Period. If uh, like you know, um, get the physics involved. Uh, it's, I don't know that what what you want, what you want to ask. But you know, if the field match, the field light doesn't match the field. That means uh, you're not going to treat. That's a stop right there. Uh, does that answer your question, or you have more follow up? I'll wait to see what he says. And then another asks, should we rely on both skin marks and daily imaging? Doesn't the daily imaging, especially MV imaging, cause additional dose to the patient? Exactly, it does, uh, for sure. You know, sometimes if you be able to do, if, if still do, that's the advantage, you know, using the KV. If you be able to use a KV, if you have the KV access to a KV, uh, but you know, so the only thing is, uh, you know, you MV images, you, be, you, you know, you, the, the, the beam is soft. So if the doctor puts in, they want to have the MV, uh, you got to give the MV. But uh, for, for MRT, basically, you know, you're better off with KV imaging. 
uh, but you know, sometimes Dr. Tennis is like, you know, they want they want to see coming from the beam angle itself. Because now it's a, your your KV has come like 90 and 270 or uh, 180 and uh, uh, no uh, AP. Uh, so you have like 180 uh, zero to 70. So that's not like you know you you beam you beam uh, it's not the beam it's not projecting your beam. But when you take your MV because now you have to you you putting uh, if it is the beam itself uh, the the field itself that's a beam. Some doctor may prefer that. But uh, with the advent of uh, KV, I think uh, almost everybody uses KV to set up patient. You're right, uh, MV gives a uh, high dose versus the KV. Uh, okay. Again, you know, it requires more imaging uh, often. Uh, plants are, as I uh, spoke about earlier, make it easier and uh, recording very fast. That's a good thing about it, you know. So now you have to make sure that everything looks good and uh, uh, check everything from uh, notation. You check your uh, treatment calendar is updating. All that stuff. The council again. You, know, you have two therapists looking at things. Make sure everything's good. Uh, again, you know, we still check the machine parameter. Again, you know, uh, the RT workflow at this step does not change, you know, from 2D to the T. You have to check everything. Again, you have an angle, the arc clockwise. I think this is the same one I uh, talked about. Oh, it's a different one, but uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, you will watch you what's the starting uh, angle stopping, all that stuff. You know, it starts at 178, it stops 182. Uh, check that the first day, check, you know. Uh, make sure everything grows for all uh, the parameters. Here we go, the plan, the uh, magnified right here. You feel this right there, and uh, your beam energy, your beam out, your arc, uh, here's the uh, gantries. I'm trying to figure out where this line came from. Uh, another video that, you know, didn't work for me, uh, but this is like, basically, it's gonna show you uh, the MXs are moving. Uh, the step and shoot, you know, you see the MLC move and this, you know, be more MLC move and be more, but your country stays in one place, so it's a static, it's not a VMAT, it's not an arc. Sorry about the video not working again. Same thing here, VMAT again. You know, this video doesn't work to uh, apologize again, but uh, when we send it, I'll send it with a uh, see dynamic MLC, but you know, when the country moves. On this one and VMAT, uh, the MLC is moving at the same time. But on the, uh, you know, step and shoot, the gantry stays uh, one place, but uh, the MLC are moving. That makes a difference. All right. Uh, 50 person answer. The determined parameter check are no longer necessary. Yeah, that's good. Like more than, you know, half answer the right questions. Yeah, no matter what it is. Uh, Parameter, we've got to check. Everything has to be checked. Earlier, we talked about, you know, what we check in the parameter, your X, J, your Y, uh, call me every parameter, you know, table. And another thing too, uh, once after the first day, it depends from institution to institution, we capture our table parameter, like, you know, what's our vertical, what is our lateral, uh, I mean, what's our vertical, what is our in and out, left, right. And uh, here we capture them after the first treatment, capture them to next, they get the next day when we treat, we know if there's any tolerance more than two cm, it's going to show red. But you know, we don't even get to the two cm probably within two millimeter. But uh, I don't know if your institution does that. It's very very important to capture those parameter. For example, for today treatment, for the first day treatment, let's say your vertical is eighteen, and your left right is zero point five, and uh, your in and out is like let's say one twenty three. So if the next day when you treat that, if you vertical, especially at the vertical, vertical is like, like say 22, that's 4 cm difference, it should be, you know, because especially maybe in and out, but you place your patient on the wrong, you know, in and out, like you position, you position them like, you know, inferior or superior or left, right, you offset them, but you, but you vertical, you anterior posterior shouldn't change that much, especially at 4 cm. That's, a, that's like a sign saying that you probably put the wrong plan or you probably put the wrong patient so that's why you want to make sure you want to make sure that this one gives you another safety net by capturing those parameters. Because anterior posterior, we're not going to change for CM. There's no way. 
So, you know, even having that, you know, in your mind, you know, having that in your mind, like, okay, you know, what's my, you know, the parameter. So it should be the workflow, the first day workflow that, you know, you capture that parameter. And in the, and in the daily treatment to work uh, safety timeouts, it should be parameter, you know, everything's okay. The parameters are all done. So there's not any override. If you override something on your parameter, why? You know, if, if, even if you, if you override you in and out, like sup inf or left, right, why are you overriding? It should be a question, but for sure, if you have to override you anterior posterior, there's a big problem, big problem. And even the first day after you make a shift and set up your patient and uh, you looked at it, you know, you put your ODI and, uh, you know, uh, after you set up your AP ODI, you like this off by 2 cm, 3 cm, then maybe you want to talk to who's planned that one. So anterior posterior should give you, uh, what you call it, uh, should give you uh, something to look for, to, to look, you know, what's going on, what's missing. Because this way, you know, anterior posterior is going to be big, but especially if it's head and neck or uh, in the chest area or like, Sometimes, you know, and then I've done, but even 4CM will be a big problem. So let's look at that. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not saying that only concentrate on anterior posterior, but we have to concentrate all of them in and out. Make sure the patient, put the patient in the right position. That's why it's good to have, you know, indexed our, uh, our device, the index to the table. So even our in and out or left to right doesn't change. Uh, but, you know, it depends how the institution, you know, uh, treat the patient, but uh, I think it should be a workflow for the safety to make sure that, you know, our patients are positioned the right and on the right position. Oh, all right. See, I thought. All right, here we go. Uh, which one of the following is correct? How many? How many things uh, I will see? Can anybody tell me why it's C? All right, let's start from A. More organ at risk are spared with 3D than MRT. Because, you know, the margin is so big on 3D, that is wrong, uh, versus MRT. 2D has better dose conformity than 3D and MRT. No, no, 3D and MRT are more conformal. You know, usually these are box and 2D. And we can't scale those with 2D since it's more conformal. I know we know that we already said that it's not conformal as the other two. So the answer is organ at risk are more protected because we have very tight margin with the MRT. Yeah, here's the thing, uh, we'll go back again. Uh, the problem is, you know, telephones are nowadays, a big problem is telephones. I think uh, we need to uh, watch our using phone and uh, Always we have to be, you know, we have to look at the patient, we have to look at the machine, uh, everything around us, uh, communicate what we want another, time out, safety check. Yeah, so, you know, uh, like I spoke, you know, you know, we just throw the patient on the table and you just take x-ray, I'm like, oh, it's off by 4 cm, so let's move patient 4 cm. Unnecessary uh, radiation exposure. Let's use our mark, put the patient on, 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 I mean, on a position, uh, then take our image. Maybe we don't have to take the post image because the patient may be perfect because we use the leather. So it dies, you know, there's times that we don't even have to, any uh, institution, what kind of policy the institution has? Do they have to film after two millimeter? Or is it necessary to film after two, two millimeter? Or may some industry said that unless it's more than three millimeter, we don't have to film. All that stuff has to be in place. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a lot about positioning. Let's not just depend on IGRT. As I mean, it's a best invention, but let's use it wisely. Don't give patient unnecessary dose. Again, you know, uh, we have to check our plan because the automatic camera doesn't mean it's the right plan. I mean, it's, a, it's probably, you know, they may be different from a prescription, all that stuff, you know. Maybe they plan uh, for, for the wrong uh, patient, uh, like a plan uh, could be, the patient may have the, the right name, maybe. Uh, let's check it for the right, let's say like, you know, the right side, let's say it's the right femur, is the right femur? Or is it plan is the left femur? You gotta check everything. You see, again, it could be wrong patient side plan, as there may have been an error introduced since the last treatment, yeah. And let's check, you know, when we pull a patient every day, let's go, we gotta go through our uh, 
prescription, make sure that nothing changed or unsigned. Sometimes the doctor puts some note and forget to sign it back. It may say pending, make sure it's signed. We have to make sure it's signed. Then does it change anything on the plan? Check that one again. Is it unsigned the plan? We've got to check that again. Uh, very important. Doctor probably decided to cut some uh, prescription. Maybe so does some, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, they make on communication, they send an email, maybe you didn't see it, but you know what? When we pull the patient, the first thing we have to check is check our image, check is there any kind of notation, check the prescription and the, the plan. If this image is rejected, we have to check that and say, why is that rejected? You know, and make sure that it's got to be for sure the come to some kind of uh, comment from the doctor that maybe move the patient this way, maybe patient is crooked, crooked, you know, let's do all that stuff. So we'll be ready to set them up. Again, you know, uh, we have to monitor the treatment progress. Uh, you know, like I said, check your uh, charting, check your uh, uh, treatment calendar, treatment calendar, make sure, you know, uh, again, uh, when we train patient, uh, ganti collusion, um, collusion there, uh, everything is uh, working the way we want it. Uh, make, sure, make sure patient is not moving. Especially if you have inpatient, you know, they, 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 they tend to move, you know, like if they're in pain, you know, uh, question is what they move affected what we treat. We have a patient, uh, you know, let's say you have, you treat a mask, I mean, brain, the mask, and patient is moving the legs far away from ISO. How much do you think that warrant to go set up a patient? All that stuff. But you know what? All this comes because we, we have to look at the patient. We have to watch the whole time. From the time we go outside all the way to get them down, we have to look at them. That's it. We have to watch. That's why we have the camera. That's why we have, you know, communication. That's what's for. Again here, uh, you know, co-driver, just like the pilot here. Uh, this is another video, sorry about that. This is a race car, none of the video worked for me. Okay, but that's a race car right there. All right, the question right here. Compared to MRT and CD, results, precise treatment, more toxicity, better confirmatory, none of the above. All right, we can check our poll now. So we didn't get the poll right now. Oh, you didn't get it? All right, can you answer yeah, the poll? There's no poll. There's no I didn't poll. get the poll too. All right, sorry there's, about that. So, there's no poll. No poll. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, A. Okay, what's the answer? A, okay, how many people say A? The answer is B actually. B. B, how many, how many people say B? All right, here we go, let's go on. All right, here we go. Yep, B. Because now, think about it, with MRT, we have a very tight margin. So, you know, it exposes a lot of, you know, organ risk, but with 3D. So, because it will be- B what no question I say she's asked thermona exams. Uh -oh. sorry. What do you say? Sorry about that. I didn't hear. So because we're treating you know, more uh, basically the margins are a little bigger and we uh, we 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 tend to treat more uh organ risk. Uh, so it's more toxicity on this one. Uh, when you look at it, based on this question, actually, and answer precise treatment, where, you know, because you have modulated treatment with the MRT and better conformity, because again, you have this MRC making that shape. Uh, so it's more toxicity. All right, now we come to the Department of Consideration. Yeah, because now we have, you know, with the, with the, there's a longer treatment, especially as step and shoot versus MR VMAT, it's going to take longer time. Uh, even the planning is going to take long time because IMRT planning, uh, uh, which called uh, uh, IMRT planning, it takes longer than uh, 2D or 3D. Uh, some may take even uh, three, four days. Some may take a week based on that. 
uh, again, we go between simulation to planning take a long, takes a long time. Contouring, um, increase bomb part requirement, yeah, for physics. But you know, again, now uh, Martin, I think uh, there should be more therapist work with you. Should be like a second person with you. Uh, I hope I'm not creating controversy here, but uh, that would be good. That would be better to have a second therapist working. Or to actually answer for sure, QA has to be, it's a now we have to be robust. You know, every every MRT treatment should have a QA. Okay, again, you know, because they have like, it's got to be all kind of uh, new different uh, machine, you know, computers has to be done. Uh, you know, how would that be implemented? Uh, who's in the training? Physician, you know, the physicists, RTT, uh, uh, all these are necessary. Uh, you know, a potential opportunity for errors, you know, that's why like we got to check everything, you know, do the QA. Uh, let's make sure that. The, I think the lot, the lot, earlier what I told you what happened in New York, uh, I, I don't think they did the QA on that patient, but I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, but we got to check that, uh, you know, let's do uh, check, got to check that. That's why we have in the chart check every week has to be checked, chart has to be checked every week. But before that, everything is matched, uh, the prescription match the plan. Then therapists, you know, we are the last stand of defense. No matter what it is, it came down, you know, it could be anybody's error, but it, once it gets down to us and we be moan, that's it. So we so we have to make sure that we work, we need to work hard to make sure we got the right plan, the right patient, the right site, everything is perfect. MS is always it should be. Uh, I mean, documentation is anything change, you know, what kind of support will the vendor provide, you know, will vendor, uh, you know, let's say we buy a new machine that the vendor, you know, does training. Do they take, do they do side training? Is there any upgrade to the machine? This IGRT, will they come and do that? All these are like, you know, I mean, now some new equipment. Now, now we added something, you know, now you have like, you know, images are coming from the side, you know, that's another uh, collision issue. And the maintenance and the and image images goes down, uh, MLC goes down, all that stuff. Yeah, that's a cost. Uh, you know, the, the, this are the department. Uh, I mean, this cost should also include in the personnel, so you know, to help the RTT. You know, as as an RTT, I always say that you know we uh, has to be uh, supported. So uh, anybody heard heard me that? Uh, I think uh, should be a second two therapists to work for the best for, for, for the best uh, care of the patient. Okay, here's the remain the same, but detail like uh, electronic documentation, no lifting again, we spoke about that earlier. Uh, same visual check, same team, imaging, same check on monitoring. How do I how do you know that I'm delivering a correct one? That's why like you set up, go to the set up, set them up, that way the simulation was done. And this doing the plan came, you know, take your X-ray or you CT, make sure everything's set up right. Because like, you know, with the 2D, you could go inside, you verify your field, uh, but you know, uh, for the VMAT uh, or IMRT, make sure that uh, everything's set up the way it's supposed to be set up, take your X-ray, make sure it looks good and it's, it's perfect. Then that's how you know, uh, we know that uh, we're doing correct. All right, next week is going to be simulation principle. Uh, I think next time I'm going to see you on session 14, final exam review. Uh, any question? Everybody okay? Uh, Thank you. Abid has a question. Okay. Uh, hello, Mustafa. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question regarding the imaging protocol, actually. The okay. things like uh, if you are going for the prostate or for the any other GI, so you need to have a protocol, let's suppose the bladder rectal protocol. So most of the time we are going with CBCT so that we, we are checking both the things like the bladder playing at the rectum. So is it the same protocol that we are using because uh, we need to match the, uh, the structure with the soft tissues, not with the bones. So we are going all the time with CBCTs to check the bladder volume and the prostate. 
So okay. Okay. is it the like the global protocol or we are going with the right way? Because uh, for us, the important thing is that the treatment should go as precise as we can. So if you go with the bone matching, so we know that there is also like, like three millimeter movement of prostate also. So therefore we are going with CBCT. Your comment will be appreciated on this. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, like you know, Doc said earlier, it depends on uh, on uh, this, you know on a site where we treat. But you know, uh, uh, I mean, we have doctors; uh, uh, they do CBCT every day on a prostate patient. Like I said, like you said, you know, they could check the blood volume, and you know, uh, to you know set up your uh, PTV. As I you know, because you know now you have a three D image in that you know uh, with the CBCT. Yeah, that's a, that's a, the right way to go. Uh, you know, like uh, how the most doctors, they do that CBCT setup, they do that. Thank you. Uh, sorry, one more question, Mustafa. Is it possible that we can we can get the departmental imaging protocol also, like we can compare like what we are using now and what other department are using. So it will be good to have some diversified uh, protocols, if it's possible. Yeah, let me talk, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, I'll try to put up something together, okay? And uh, uh, send that to you. Thank you, Edwin Mustafa. Yes, sir. Thank you for the nice presentation. One more time, I'm sorry. Turn it off. I think you want to say thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Anybody have any question? All right, thank you all. Hello, I have a question, Mustafa. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Chris from Nigeria. Hi, Please. When you have a rectal case where the rectum is still inside to, that is no, no, no surgery. And when you have a rectal case when surgery has been done, will you do this? Will I apply the same modality for treatment? I, I know I could give this question to the doctor. Doctor, can you answer on this one, please? If you, if you, if you want to. Well, with us, uh, uh, okay, well the, the dose will be different. So, um, for rectal cases whereby the surgery has not been done, typically what you're giving in those settings is preoperative radiation. Um, the highest dose we'd probably go to is maybe 54 um, because we have to um, be sure that, you know, it would be safe to do surgery and there won't be wound healing complications. In those cases, it's fine to just do 3D because what you're treating is the entire pelvic and there's nothing fancy about that. You can use a 3D conformal plan for that um, and add a boost to the tumor um, itself. And so you don't necessarily need IMRT. You can do 3D for that. Um, in a post-operative setting, where there are multiple positive nodes um, and you need to treat extended pelvic field with um, lymphatic channels, or you need to treat the surgical bed because of a positive margin, then you might want to consider IMRT because now that you have less, um, you have less. <laughs> Now that you have um, less uh, less space within your pelvis, the, the the bladder will fall down, the bowel will fall down, and so in this setting, you may want to use IMRT so that you can easily carve around um, carve around organs at risk, essentially. So you know it's okay. To Mute your mic. Please mute yourself, please. Uh, does that answer your question, Chris? Yes, it, it does. But I want to add again. Um, in this case now, um, which imaging will you prefer? Is do, do we do an MVKV or a CBCT? Okay, so if it's pre-op 3D 
MVKB is fine. If you are doing post-op IMRT, you should use Cone Beam. Okay, 